Hello and welcome to our fifth Navigate Rebar Discovery session where we'll take a look at our new Divide Rebar features. This is our first iteration of Divide Rebar and we have concentrated on laps and a division of rebar just as a starting point. Of course, as the product continues to develop, we would add additional functionality for other geometry and reinforcement configurations. Let's begin by adding reinforcement to the two walls you can see here. So I'll select the wall command. We'll then select the wall. And in this example here, I've got name settings. So I'm going to apply rebar uh, using W1 setting to this wall over here. And then I'll select the second wall over here. I'll select W2 for the name setting and apply this. I want to make all the rebar visible, so I'll select the rebar tab and here we'll show rebar and also show obscured. Now here you can also see that we have divide rebar, so I'm now going to launch that concurrently with the wall reinforcement tool. So we can now see that we have our new divide rebar dialog box. So let's just take a look into the dialog box here. So you can see here that we have a maximum length that we could set of, in this example, 10 meters, or we could opt to divide the reinforcement into a set number of segments. In this example here, I'm going to utilize maximum length, and you can see we've got two configurations for the lapping of reinforcement bar. I could actually lap the bar like so, so all the laps are in the same plane, or more preferred, we could actually use the staggered lap here, so we can create laps that are out of plane, potentially where we have high moments and stresses and so on. You can see here that we have the overlap factor, so this is uh, times the diameter of the rebar, so in this case I'm using 50 times diameter, and also I have an actual stagger offset. I'm actually going to set my stagger offset to 500, and now I'm going to pick a bar that I'd like to divide. So. I'm going to start by selecting this bar here, okay, and we can now see that that's actually been divided. Now also I'll divide this bar at the back as well, and again that's been divided. Now you will notice that I actually pick specific sides there so that I don't have the laps in the same position. So now we can close down our wall reinforcement dialog box and we can now have a look at actually positioning those bars so we can clearly see now they've been divided. So what I'm going to do here is select this reinforcement and I'll now just move that so it's actually in the right position, perhaps in here somewhere. And now we can see that lap has now been implemented. If I now switch back to the 3D working view, we can now see that bar. Now, if I select this uh, rebar set here, we can see that it's still a rebar set and I can also see here that the length of this is 10 meters. So I'm going to just change the shape code because this is now a stock size. I'll do the same thing for the lap on the back, so I'll select this uh, reinforcement here, and again I can see this one's 10 meters, so again this will be set to stock. Now again I'd like to move this one out of plane, so I'll go back into the sectional view, and I'll go to move, and I'll just move it up the diameter of the rebar, just so it doesn't clash. And now we can see that lap is nicely configured on the opposite side of the wall. Let's have a look at some other functionality with Divide Rebar. So I'm going to actually now add some reinforcement to this column. So similar to what we did before, we'll select the column tool, we'll select the column itself, and in here I'm going to use our name settings. So in this case it's C1, and then I'll go ahead and actually apply that reinforcement to the column. Again, I actually want to make sure I can visualize that, so I'll show the rebar and show an obscured. And I can now see all the reinforcement here. What I'd like to do now is actually divide this into a couple of segments over here, but actually I now don't want to lap the rebars because I potentially want to add couplers into the column reinforcement. So now I can actually tell it to divide the rebars but not actually lap them. Now because I want to actually lap all four of these rebar sets, I can just select them all like so and click divide and we can now see that division has now been added to the column. Let's now add some couplers in, so we'll go to the Structure tab and we'll select Rebar Coupler. And now we can select the rebars like so, and we can now see the couplers are being added in to our rebar sets. Okay, so we'll just complete that over here, and again at the back over here, and there's the couplers added in. So again here you can see that our Divide Rebar feature has enabled us to actually edit that rebar and then add those couplers in as required. Now looking over here you can see that I've got a much larger slab in here and of course we will definitely have rebars that are over stock length. So we'll see how we can actually utilize this with a pre-selection. So I'm now going to select all of the reinforcement bar in this host. I'm going to set our divide rebar dialog to use a maximum stock length of 10 meters 
Of course, now I do want to lap these rebars. Again, I want to make sure that I've actually got the staggered lap configuration. Again, I can set the lap. So in this case, I'm going to say 40 times diameter. And you can see I've got the offset of 500. I'm just going to change that. Perhaps we'll have 250 in there. And now I can clearly see that I've got 28 rebar elements selected. So I can just simply select divide. And now we can see that the divide rebar tool has actually added the divisions in automatically for the entire slab. So now if I actually pick one of these rebar sets, and in this case I'm just going to isolate it so you can see how that's worked, you can clearly see now that we've got that nice staggered lap added to all the bars within the slab. Okay, hope that's been useful and I look forward to seeing you in our next discovery session.